The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with the woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, 
My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Good morning. I don't think I've seen many Sundays where there are so many yawns going on in the church out there. I guess that one hour difference has made uh, all of you a little bit sleepy this morning. As we gather this morning to celebrate the Holy Mass, we are filled with joy, of course, in this opportunity to be nourished with the word and the bread of life. My, um, as a priest, on many occasions, I have had the opportunity to minister to the missionaries of charity, the sisters of St. Mother Teresa. I've given a number of retreats and reflection days in several different places around the country and seen them in even other places around the world. And if you visit the missionaries of charity, you will find that in every one of their chapels, there is one common persistent element in every chapel in the entire world. And that is, on the main wall of their chapel, there will be a large crucifix, and under the crucifix written these words, I thirst, in every chapel around the world. It's interesting if we think about Jesus thirsting on the cross, because in the Gospel of John, which we are presented with today, there is, there are only two occasions in all of the Gospel of John, where we hear about Jesus being thirsty. And the second occasion, of course, is in the Gospel of today's Mass. As our Lord is sitting next to the well, he asks this woman for a drink. We have two occasions where Jesus expresses thirst, with this Samaritan woman and on the cross. And John, the evangelist, wants us to connect these two moments because they interpret one another and allow us to realize what is this thirst that Jesus is experiencing. When we read this gospel passage of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, Jesus asks her for a drink, but you know, there's something strange that happens. I don't know if you noticed that. It seems like Jesus never got the drink. She says that the well is too deep and they have this conversation and she leaves her well and she runs off. And we never actually see Jesus drinking the cup of water that he is asking for. It's worth noting because it seems as if Jesus' thirst is perhaps not a physical thirst, even though it's 12 noon on a hot day in the area of Samaria. And we may arrive at this notion that the thirst that Jesus has is not really a physical thirst because he also mentions a physical hunger, or at least a type of hunger. Do you notice in the gospel passage, Jesus says, uh, I have food of which you do not realize. The apostles were offering him food, and he did not take the food to eat because he said there was a food that was greater than material food and that is to do the will of God. And so we begin to put these pieces together, and we see that 
Jesus on the cross, Jesus at the well, complaining about a thirst is not a physical thirst at all, but it is a thirst for th something spiritual, something that is beyond this material world. And as we investigate this, we see clearly that the thirst that Jesus has is for the conversion of souls. Jesus drinks in deeply the love that this woman offers him by the conversion of her life and by the ministry that she goes out and invites all the people of her village to return to Jesus in order to know him. The thirst that Jesus has both at the well and on the cross is the thirst wherein he drinks deeply of the love that we offer him. Has it ever occurred to you that Jesus needs you? That he actually thirsts for you? We know, of course, that Jesus gives to us, that when we love Jesus, it is we who are being filled with his presence. But do you think of Jesus now as being hungry, as being thirsty? Because Jesus thirsts for your love. Jesus is hungry to receive your affection in the way that you pray to him in the way that you celebrate mass, but also in the way that you care for your brothers and sisters. In the ministry that you give to those around you, you are giving Jesus the spiritual drink and the spiritual food for which he longs. At the same time, and this is a great mystery, when we give to Jesus to drink, it is we who are filled. Our thirst is quenched because he says to us that when we ask him for a drink, that within us will flow living streams that will quench our thirst. And I think this is great news because in our society, people are thirsty. People are longing, they're lonely, they want something. But so often people look in the, long, the wrong places in order to be filled and nourished. I heard a story this week. I, I am not a golfer. I have never in my entire life hit a golf ball except for at miniature golf. So I know nothing about the sport of golf really except for what I've heard. But those of you who are golfers, I'm sure will know the name David Duvall. Apparently one of the greatest golfers of all times, right? 20 times uh, he participated in the PGA Tour, 13 times he won, including a major title at the Open Championship, as well as winning the British Open. So this is a great golfer. Evidently, the story is told that at the height of his career, when he had everything he could possibly imagine, he fell into a profound and deep depression because he had worked all of his life to achieve success in the area of golf. And then once he got there, he realized this does not satisfy the thirst of my soul. There's so many people in our society who are the same way. We search in this world for the satisfaction of our soul. This world cannot satisfy the hunger and the thirst that is deep within us that has its spiritual roots in our connection with God. The only way that we can satisfy that deep, spiritual, profound hunger and thirst that is part of our human nature is when we look to God. Only Jesus is the living water. Only Jesus is the bread of life. Today, my brothers and sisters, Jesus comes to this Samaritan woman and he asks her for a drink so that he may fill her with living water. When we give to Jesus, when we love Jesus, when we minister to those around us, we give to Jesus to drink. We satisfy his real hunger and thirst for love and affection. And in giving to Christ, he gives for, far more back to us. 
so that we ourselves are nourished and fed with living springs and the bread of life.